Thank you to your friends at RBP Ayurveda Colombo. If you're planning on rejuvenating yourself or having the professionals to work on every muscle bone in your body or those stiff areas and you just feel so much of pain, unfortunately, you're like, oh, I need a solution. Well, they have brought in their secrets that they have been treasuring in Anuradhapura all the way into Colombo, making life so much more easier. So my guest today, as he's working on some amazing pieces, will get his relaxation at RBP. I was about to give it to him. But thank you. You all kind of look alike. But anyway, but that's for you right. from Adi here. So thank you. If you want to rejuvenate yourself or indulge in great food that is gastronomically so good, well, visit our friends at Adi Pia Colombo. Danu on fire, powered by. Missing something? Just Celeste. I just say it. Welcome to Dano on Fire, right here on High TV, your luxury channel. Today we're checking out the beautiful Tinted Gel and I'm here with Professor Jagat. I'm just going to say it at the start. All right. Okay. That's after this, I'm just going to be Jagat. Go ahead. Being a professor is not an easy task. Yeah, it is not. Yeah. So I need to say that at the start. Um, anyway, we're here to speak about color. It's, uh, it's a one month long project that's uh, it's been done to showcase and portray artists from our country to the world. And also we are also having world-renowned artists coming here as well, which is amazing. Let's first speak about this wonderful man here. Can I say you're rocking up the 70s beautifully? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so in the 80s is when you sort of uh, mastered this craft and came out of uh, the university with your, with your educational certificates in art but at that time I don't think art is what people wanted you to get into no way no yeah no no because even, you'd be even poor my for the parents, rest of your life yeah yeah even yeah. my parents you know I did chemistry physics botany zoo with uh, yeah like the, all of that I can uh, see that in yeah. you you know but then without <laughs> telling my parents I entered the arts art university Thought, uh, art school and they didn't know until for about six months and my dad didn't speak to me for about six weeks like because I dumped his dream. For, not for sure, of course. You know, people, they say the ones who can do science very well can draw very well as well. So you yes. just sort of shifted that towards this. Yeah. 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 But I'm sure they must be so proud with all what you've achieved after that. In the 90s, you created a shift and you made a dent for Sri Lankan artists to sort of create a place for themselves. Tell me about your journey from the 80s to the 90s when Sri Lankans never wanted to make art their bread and butter. Right. Well, you know, when you decide to be, well, how do I say, you just want to do art and you just want to be an artist, you do not rationalize why you want to be an artist. If you try to rationalize why you want to be an artist, you're never going to be that. That is true. So that's point one. You have to be stupid enough to, to be stubborn, yeah. to follow your, just be yourself. But what was true about the time in the 90s was like, you know, there was no art gallery as such, only yes. seven or six gallery was there and art materials were awfully expensive and it was, if, if it was available and yeah. it wasn't available. But, 
And we were taught a kind of art, very European kind of art, you know, what mm. we call the abstract expressionism. Mm. We had a great teacher called Eche Karu, who is still, you know, he's in his late 90s, like. So, we did a kind of art that was very meditative, abstract art and, and all that. But me, people like me and Chandra Gupta Tenwara, we had a different way of looking at it. Looking at it. Because, you know, I was a student unionist, I was kidnapped once, oh you know, I God. spent a couple of days in Riman prison and I wasn't a choir boy, you know, to be honest. <laughs> so, anyway. I just wanted to ask you, how was prison then? Well, equally bad, I guess. <laughs> but I've met some good, nice people, mm. anyway. Were um, you left alone? Yes, yeah, ah, yeah. Because, you see, my father was, was, uh, was working in the Supreme Court those uh. days, so I, he had his own inside connection. Yes, so I was out within two days. He was so angry. Most he of was the so time. pissed no, off. Of yeah, course, of course, of course. Yeah. You know. Anyway, my point here is that you know, I had so many stories to tell, and I did not have an art language to do that. But when I did my graduate studies in the American University in Washington D.C., that was also a very abstract art kind of place. But they did not push me out. Uh, away from my figurative uh, fascination, my fascination with figure drawing and the anxiety that I was always dealing with. You know, when you, you see, I told you my dad was in the Supreme mm. Court, so I grew up in a family with the idea of law and order. Yeah. But then when you were kidnapped and, you know, and attacked, you lost all that. No? Yeah. Once How long were you kidnapped for? What was one, about say, 12 hours? I am not going to tell you where, well, it was to the, to the head office of the um, political party in power at that time. I'm talking of 1970s. You can guess. <laughs> so, you know, they treat you so well and they dumped you in the beach. And, but that kind of, you know, once torture, you n never get out of that idea. Uh -huh. you, you lose something with it, no? So that my idea of order and, uh, and this, there is something that is to protect you, just evaporated like this. And then you live with this anxiety. And then 1983 happened, you know. I was working as a painting conservator in Dambulla, preserving these ancient glorious murals, Buddhist murals. I'm a Sinhalese and a Buddhist. And you come down to Colombo on 83 July to this major chaos in Colombo, you know. My own brethren killing Tamils in, in Colombo, in the city. And that's the first time I realized, you know, you are at a total loss as a, as a person. You, see, you have lost all, all your sense of order and law and order and your idea about Buddhism and you know this compassion and all that is just evaporating in front of your own eyes. And that is the thing that I wanted to paint in my work. So abstract art did not help me to do that. So I, we developed my own way of, you know, telling that story. Telling the story. I realized, you know, all the young people of my generation and even today has these stories to tell. Yeah. Sure. Think of the people in Palestine right now. They have so many stories to tell. Abstract art is not enough. So what I what happened with me and my intervention is that the Sri Lankan modern art took what we call the a narrative turn, a turn to tell the stories, mm -hmm. and it opened the studio to the outside world. So art became very, became very conscious of politics and social issues. It's amazing. Uh, see, every artist or anyone who is in the field of creativity, when life throws them some amazing curveballs, not that you want it to, no. is when you start of really blossom into something amazing. More stories with him coming up after this. Do stick around. Uh, we will see you right after the break. This is done on fire at the gorgeous studio. Danu on fire, powered by Celeste Daly. Missing something? She's Celeste. Thank you to your friends at RBP Ayurveda Colombo. If you're planning on rejuvenating yourself, 
or having the professionals to work on every muscle bone in your body or those stiff areas and you just feel so much of pain unfortunately you're like oh, I need a solution well they have brought in their sequence that they have been treasuring in Anuradhapura all the way into Colombo making life so much more easier so my guest today as he's working on some amazing pieces will get his relaxation at Kathi I was about to give it to him but thank you you all kind of look alike but anyway, but that's for you, right. from Adi here. So thank you. If you want to rejuvenate yourself or indulge in great food that is gastronomically so good, well, visit our friends at Adi Pia Colombo. Welcome back to the show, and this is a Dan One Fire. Now we are speaking to Jagat, as he doesn't want any of his attachments to be mentioned. <laughs> yep. So I wanted to speak to you about Kala. Now it's a brilliant concept that's being done here. It's a collective project by so many people and it's also one month long so yeah. and it's happening at various locations. Tell me the importance of Kala. You know, um, Sri Lankan modern art has gone through, I would say, three, two major international movements. One is the first is the 43 group that happens in 1930s and 40s. No? Then in the late 1990s this new movement came. So, uh, an event like Kala is the epitome of that new movement. Like, you know, what it presents is that, you know, new art that came, uh, that began to formulate mm. in the early 2000, like, and then now you have all these great younger artists, also older artists like me. So, now we have a place in the Asian art uh, community. Mm. So if we were, we are not just receiving stuff from the outside world, we are also giving back. We are defining how to do art mm. in the 21st century in Asian terms. Mm. See, like, you know, Sri Lankan art uh, and architecture has been, you know, contributing to the wider worlds of art and architecture. So, Kala, like, you know, it, it involves the Guggenheim and the Christie's and, you know, all, all, all these great um, institutions in that that define the art world today mm. is, are, are taking part in this this kala thing so what it the importance is it tells the world to the larger world um, the coming of a new generation of artists to the international arena that's what it is telling you know after the 43 group is there ever a moment where you have sat and thought okay this is uh, now the, the the interpretation of art could be anything like a line could be interpreted in many ways yeah. and some people just do splashes of paint and mm. like all types of painting. Have you ever sat and wondered the definition of art has, is unique to a person? What would you say is right and wrong art? Dano, you don't ask that kind of difficult questions <laughs> in public. You know, see, art like That's life. That's what I get paid for. Yeah. <laughs> art like life cannot be defined. You give a definition and art would Die. Not die, it behaves in a different way. Ah, sorry, it's okay. the same like life. Yeah. You, say, you say this is how life is and then you, the next week you will have a different experience like. So, but having said that, one thing about art is, uh, in my opinion, the kind of art that I like is when art does reveal you things, allow you to see behind the, behind the surface, behind the idea of power and knowledge and body, what is lying behind these connections mm -hmm. of knowledge and power. So that is for me when art is at best. Right. But art can also be immersive, entertaining and all that. Those are great art. But you know, I'm Jagat Pira Singh. And I this think is of this is me. Yeah. Okay. That's my that's why you are doing art. Have you ever seen people who are completely commercialized and popularized for the reason that they either have heavy endorsements or they, they are in right places so their art gets bought but you are thinking to yourself hmm. yeah well you see Danu I shouldn't <laughs> be I shouldn't be critiquing other <laughs> artists in <laughs> public but there are artists like that yeah but you see let's look at it from the perspective of the audience if there is an audience you see if you say why do I you buy art, you say you know this is a beautiful, pretty things to go on my wall. That's a damn good reason to buy art, mm. but that's not the reason why I do art or why I would collect art. But that's another way of thinking of art. So then there may be artists who would cater to that. I don't think you know, it's my job to say to say anything about it. You see, but if you come to learn art under me, this is there's a particular way of doing art and thinking about art. You know, for me, art has a social and political 
purpose to promote collective action and collective thinking. Mm -hmm. It's not to present you in your own world, but to allow you to look at the world from a collective perspective and a collective thinking process, not just extreme individualism. Right. But you can come to know more details about Kala on all their social platforms. They are very active Instagram page as well, and you can also follow Hi online and our digital platforms for you to come to know more about where you can go experience Kala. Now, in terms of all the artists who are coming, can you mention some of the names who are? Well, Chandragupta Tenwara, Mohanad Kada, you know, they are all in that uh, that wonderful or very highly imaginative and creative exhibition that Mariam, that young mm. um, curator, uh, has put together. It's a, it's a, it's a very creative uh, exhibition. Very, you know, curating a show is very difficult, and sometimes our curators can be extremely um, over creative, mm. and so Mariam has done such a challenging job in this exhibition where he, she puts a, a body of artists, a whole range of artists around Lionel Wen's work, which would be great to see. Mm. So um, there are also the you know, younger artists there, from you know from very senior artists to the very young generation. You know that's 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 one of the greatest things. And then there are panel discussions like you know me and. And Chandragupta Tenwar will be talking about something called the, the Art Manifesto we did in 1990s called the No Order Group. Mm. You see, an artist, we argued, is uh, just another specialist. This is not something very unique. He's, you're doing a service, providing something back to the society like, an, like what you are doing, mm. or, or an engineer, or a doctor. Yes, no. We tried to bring the idea of artist from heaven to the ground mm. in the 90s. But you know, People keep putting us up there, but I like to be on the ground. But it's also nice that people are putting talent up there because, you know, I see so many artists still, you know, struggling even to buy paint, to buy canvas. Mm. And, but their skill is so beautiful. Mm. But how long would it take for artists to have, you know, a beautiful, well-balanced life that has a future for them? Um, that's a good question. It will take minimum six to seven years after graduation, unless you are really, really lucky. And Except you have the breakthrough immediately. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but five years after graduation, it's, it's not bad. Even an architect or a doctor would spend the same time, you know, doing postgraduate studies, you know, dealing with the art, art galleries and you know, make, coming into sense of how the art market works, uh, how the global situation is. It's, you know, it's a big, tough, competitive, you know, very difficult field to make, you know, make sense of how yeah. art, art world works. Yeah. And, uh, and when it comes to art world, it's not limited to what you will see framed. Yeah. There's so much, there's creativity that could transform a place by the work that is put in. Mm. Uh, we'll speak more about it, of course. So follow Color and be a part of it. Uh, Hi and Daily Mirror are official partners to it as well. I would like to ask you, answer this question in the other, on the other side. Would I make a great nude subject? <laughs> of course, be, I tell you why. I tell you why. You provide a lot of space to, for, to do <laughs> imaginative <laughs> things, like, you know, no. I'm it's like five canvas piece work. Yeah, no, there. I, you know, like, you know, there are great artists, mm. you know, painted, uh, painted people like you. Yeah. Because, you know, it provides you to, well, you know, what is art form? To, to make you look at something very uh, usual, something to look unusual. That is true. Yeah, see, like, you know, take, you know, Botero did that. If Lionel Wendt was there, he would have appreciated it. No, he wouldn't have appreciated it. Are you lying? I tell you, because he looked at a, a particular kind of uh, a male, sensu male yeah. sensuality, sensuousness of the male really? body. Yeah, he I, wouldn't thank you. I, I, don't, I don't fit into that? No, you wouldn't. Sorry to break your heart, but you wouldn't. At least for you, would I? <laughs> of course, you would. Thanks, Jana. Yeah. Thank you. At least th thanks for meeting me. I've been some. told by that I'm a real charmer. Yeah. Um. <laughs> this is also a lie then. <laughs> You know, I can be you're one not, canvas full. You're not full. recording all this, no? Yeah. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> I can be one canvas full. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Thanks. On that note, never mind. It's okay. Uh, we will see you on the other side. Do stick around this time. on fire powered by Celeste Daily
missing something, just a Celeste. Thank you to your friends at RBT Ayurveda Colombo. If you're planning on rejuvenating yourself or having the professionals to work on every muscle bone in your body or those stiff areas and you just feel so much of pain, unfortunately, you're like, oh, I need a solution. Well, they have brought in their secrets that they have been treasuring in Anuradhapura all the way into Colombo, making life so much more easier. So my guest today, as he's working on some amazing pieces, will get his relaxation at RBT. I was about to give it to him. But thank you. You all kind of look alike. But anyway, but that's for you right. from Adi here. So thank you. If you want to rejuvenate yourself or indulge in great food that is gastronomically so good, well, visit our friends at Adi Pia Colombo. Welcome back to the show, our final segment and one of my favorite segments because you get to have something sweet over our conversation. You can actually dig into dessert while we talk. Yep. Are Some, you a sweet person? Somewhat, yes. That's amazing. Good. So, we were having a chat during this break and he told me a line that really stayed in my head. My painting likes to hang there and disturb you, which is amazing. Uh, in your creation, when you tell a story through your painting and when it leaves your nest and goes on to another wall, how does it make you feel? Good question and a difficult one. You know what happens to artists and is that, you know, however radical you want to be, you'll be soon de-radicalized by the system. That has happened to us, like, you know, those, those art in the 1990s, you know, mm. people would say, you know, these are very difficult paintings to live with, they are, you are taxing us way too much, there's <laughs> no beauty, but I don't have any one of those things with me. So, so all have gone. All are gone and some of these paintings are in this, you know, well, the interiors, mm. and um, that's what happens to art. No, art do you have a list of where they are? No. Not really. No, no. But I know, like you know. But what I'm telling you is, like you know, everything radical will soon be de-radicalized. Yeah. But then you, the artist, had to reinvent yourself. That's what I do. I'm, I always challenge myself yeah. when I paint. So when you work on a piece, how long does that storyline take you? Good. You see, sometimes it takes about. You see, I paint in series, mm. like not just one off thing, like, you know, so it takes about an year to finish a series, like or sometimes three, four years, like for about this dancing Shiva. Mm. It took about, I painted that for about three, four years, or my Dambulla series, that mm. also for about three, four years, but I don't do them, either of those themes anymore. Yeah. But I used to, you know, yeah. yeah. But you are also known for taking garbage <laughs> and yeah. making it to art. Yeah. Um, Tell me about this process. You see, like, one of the things that uh, art can do is to tell you, show you the possibility of beauty, possibility of hope, possibility of um, warm emotions in a place where it does not exist as such. Mm. So, garbage doesn't sound like that much of an aesthetic thing, but you can convert that into an aesthetic, um, something engaging experience. Mm -hmm. So once again, when I use the aesthetics, I don't use it in this very traditional sense. That means, not about beauty. Aesthetics for me is if it reveals you of something else other than what you just see. That is for me is you know it creates new sensibilities. So that's what you know we do that in in Mathura with the Mathura Festival of the Arts. Like you know we collected all this garbage from Mathura and everywhere. We are doing something, and you will see that it's. How interesting and beautiful and how engaging. So, yeah, that's one of the great things that art can do. Mm. Convert, you know, tell you of beauty in a places that you don't see it anymore. So, um, visiting galleries, being a fan of art, is also a culture that is now taking a bit of a backstage in asking people to come and witness it in person. Mm. It's, everything is so digitized, they're like, oh, can I just see a picture of it? Tell me about the times when there were exhibitions and when people came, looked at it, found a story that related to them and like... Janu, Banu, you know, see, even though you say that, but when it comes to visual art, that's still not the real case. But take a place like Museum of Modern Art, it's always full. Or, or Guggenheim in New York, it's always full. It is, uh, of course, there is the tendency to check the image first, but I don't think it has deterred or prevented people from going to, you know, 
f get the first ad ex experience of looking at, uh, mm. at a book of art. Um, I don't think it will, well, with digital art, well, you know, this is another form of art, digital art. But then there is this other forms of art is still there. Mm. You can make a digital image of, say, what is it, of this thing, but it is not this thing. When you, it's a digital image, it's digital image. Yeah. So there is a category of digital art, then there is the category of three-dimensional art. But that three-dimensional experience, you don't get it by looking at a digital image as yet, mm. maybe 10 years or 20 years from now. Maybe it's different, but not right now, not yet. Has there ever been a moment where you've done a piece and never had the heart to give it away? That's the case with me, most of my work <laughs> for me. I, you know, I'm very selfish when it comes to, I do it for myself. I, mm. yeah. That's why my paintings are quote unquote ugly and anxious and there's no beauty as such because I'm doing it for myself. Mm. It's a, it is a way that I get rid of certain emotions or mm, like, you, you, can, you can use that you know, complex word, cathartic, cat yeah. catharsis? Uh, I also that. don't know, so I also am just going to agree. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, words. it's catharsis. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's I'll like you know, look, look it it, 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 trans your, your, it transforms your emotions into something more idealized or something right. above your your mundane experience. So Thanks. you can live with pain. You know, like that's why we listen to sad songs. That is true. Yeah, why you, do you, you your is doing so well. Yeah, you temporarily give your pain to a song and take your life. Yeah, you have it. You know. That is true. But you know, I just want to tell you a little secret. When I don't know something, I just shake my head. Very okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, most of us do that. And you look, you can look a bit smart at that time. Yeah, yeah. Is that it's a good? Don't ever stop and say, "Is that the correct word?" No, no. Then I am just done. Okay. Yeah, I but won't. <laughs> but um, many people do that. You can do that. You know, you know, do that. Shaking your head. Yeah, also, like you know, you use a word that you don't really know when you don't know the question. <laughs> That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I must say. Jack, that has been absolutely amazing talking to you. I actually, you know, you have a sense of driving people towards you. Thank you. And I think it's just amazing. It's the first time I met him in person. I'm so happy that we did this show. Uh, you can be a part of Kala, be inspired by people like him and so many. It's going to be a one month long project. This is just the start to some amazing things that's going to come our way in Sri Lanka. Celebrating all these artists you would have seen when you drive past, sometimes on the road, sometimes them being bought into houses. But it's time that we sort of redefine an artist and art in our country. And this is just the first step. So yep. much to do. Uh, thank you so very much for being on the show. Absolutely a pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Danu. Thank you. Uh, we will see you soon. Till then, you keep smiling. It's a wrap on the show. And thank you to Integer for the amazing hospitality. We'll see you soon. Friends at RBT Ayurveda Colombo, if you're planning on rejuvenating yourself or having the professionals to work on every muscle bone in your body or those stiff areas and you just feel so much of pain unfortunately, you're like, oh, I need a solution. Well, they have brought in their secrets that they have been treasuring in Anuradhapura all the way into Colombo, making life so much more easier. So my guest today, as he's working on some amazing pieces, will get his relaxation at RBT. I was about to give it to him. But thank you. You all kind of look alike. But anyway, but that's for you right. from Adi here. So thank you. If you want to rejuvenate yourself or indulge in great food that is gastronomically so good, well, visit our friends at Adi Pia Colombo. Danu on fire, powered by. Celeste Daly. Missing something? She's a Celeste.